Okay, so you should have already watched the videos on the Paleolithic, which means old stone, right? So now we're going to get into the second half of our first unit, early, early days. All right, um, this is about the Neolithic, Neolithic meaning new stone, um, and the rise of civilization. So around 9000 BCE, the ice that covers most of Europe recedes. The reindeer migrate north. The mammoth and rhinoceros disappear from Europe. The climate grows warmer. We have a little transition period called the Mesolithic, and then my slide doesn't change. There we go. And then we get into part two of early, early days, which is the Neolithic and the rise of civilization. A few of your classmates will tell us about Katalhyuk, which um, is in Turkey. Uh, so we have one of our parts of this class is we have little mini research assignments in the discussions in which we teach each other about specific um, topics that relate to whichever unit we're in. So we'll learn about Katalhyuk from uh, some of your classmates in their research posts on the discussion board. It's a very important kind of transitory um, settlement and is one of the oldest settlements um, ever. Um, so anyway, we'll learn about that in the discussion. For now, we're going to go to the British Isles and we're going to talk about megaliths, henges, stone circles, and passage tombs. In this particular lecture, we're just going to look at two stone circles and then I'll have a couple more little lectures to go into different other things. While Western Europe does not have um, uh, visitable ruins, um, preserved ruins of fully developed settlements um, like in Turkey, like in the Middle East, which we'll look at next. Um, they do have my favorite developments by Neolithic people and those are stone circles. I'm a big fan of stone circles. Some of these stones are 17 feet high. Think about how tall you are. Uh, think about how many of you you would have to stack up to get to 17 feet. And some of them weigh over 50 tons. So your car weighs like a ton, maybe two, depending on what you drive. So think about 50 tons, very, very, very heavy. Thus, because they're very tall and very heavy, the uh, rocks used to make these um, forms in the Neolithic period have acquired the name megalith. So breaking down the word, just like we did with paleo, lithic and neolithic so we have old stone new stone so lith clearly means stone or rock right so what do we think mega might mean big right okay so these are just called big rocks a megalith is a big rock or a big piece of stone there are many megalithic monuments in europe but the most famous is certainly Stonehenge. I would say most of you have probably heard of Stonehenge. And Stonehenge is an example of a henge or a cromlech. C-R-O-M-L-E-C-H. Cromlech and hinge mean the same thing. That's the kind of thing that I might ask you about on a quiz. So you might want to write that down. This is a monument where megaliths are arranged in a circle. So a hinge or a cromlech is just a circular arrangement of megaliths of big rock. Big rocks in a circle is a hinge or a cromlech. Okay, Stonehenge is near um, Salisbury in southern Britain. Okay, let's learn some things about this hinge. Um, it is made of rough cut carson, which is a kind of sandstone. The outer ring, so when we look back at this, we can see there's an outer ring and a smaller ring of rocks, and then in the center there's kind of an arrangement of rocks, which we'll talk about in a second. So the outer ring, is about 100 feet in diameter. Pretty big, right? Is that bigger than you thought it was? Um, the other thing about Stonehenge, I've been here several times when I was studying in, in Europe, when I was an art history student, and um, I always pictured it being out like in the middle of nowhere, because that's how all the pictures of it look. There's a highway right next to this thing, okay? So it's, um, it's not quite as desolate as it seems like it might be. Um, anyway, uh, the outer ring that goes around the outside is about 100 feet in diameter. The megaliths are capped with lintels, so you can see on this that some of them still continue in a continuous line, 
the whole thing would have been a continuous line with lintels, that's the, the horizontal pieces that go on the top of the megaliths, all the way around in a st solid ring around the outside is how it originally would have been. Um, and then we have a, a, a ring within that ring of what's called shaker stones, those are smaller stones. And then inside of those, we have an arrangement of trilithons. These are constructions made of three stones. So one megalith, two megalith, and then a lintel on top. Three, that's a trilithon, okay? Um, there are five of these trilithon constructions that go around the center. Some of them have been destroyed over time. Um, the thought is, and a lot of this stuff is fairly mysterious, we don't know for a fact every single thing about it, but um, scholars believe that this was an astrological observation center, particularly, so it's like an observatory, right, to, to look at the sky, the stars, and things like this. Particularly, they believe it's related to the summer solstice. So the summer solstice is the longest day of the year. It usually happens around June 20th, June 21st. And it's thought that this was a very significant date to these early people, and that this was um, created as a kind of solar calendar to track that date. So it's um, pretty accurate, according to scholars, uh, as a solar calendar. Okay, let's look at something else. So near to Stonehenge, we have another stone circle called Avebury. Avebury is the largest stone circle in Western Europe. All right, and the town of Avebury is in and around the circle. Um, as you can see, so you can kind of see in this slide, the, there's like a, a built up mound that rings around the outside of the hinge and then within that there's uh, a ring of stones. Um, so uh, early people who settled here didn't really care about this <laughs> significant Neolithic site and built the town in the stone circle and around it. You can actually even go in and uh, have a pint, have a, have a beer at the Red Lion Inn, which is in the center of the Avebury Stone Circle. Um, this is older than Stonehenge, and it's, uh, it's pretty interesting. It's much larger. If we look at it, the um, diameter is 1,100 feet, so it's 1,000 feet wider than Stonehenge. Let's look at some of the stones up close and the, the megaliths up close. Um, these are just in fields now. There's sheep there. You can walk up to these, uh, unlike at Stonehenge. There's the Red Lion Inn where you can stay. You see these little uh, cement markers that are kind of look like little obelisks. Those were put in Victorian times in place of the megaliths that were removed and used to build um, contemporary structures at the time. So they kind of marked where they'd been moved. And you can see in this upper image, there's some kids like playing on it and stuff. I do have a little tangential story here. Um, I'm usually better about not jumping into these in my recorded lectures in class. I go on tangents about things a lot of my students tend to kind of like it when I get off topic, but I'll tell you a little short story here about Avebury. So the uh, Red Lion Inn, which is a pub and a kind of a bed and breakfast basically in the center, is very, very old. And it is supposedly one of the most haunted places in Europe, not haunted by the people who built Avebury, but haunted by a ghost whose name is uh, Flory. And so she and her husband owned the Red Lion Inn back in the day and supposedly he had a big beard and she caught him cheating on her and she murdered him. So the, the lore is that if you're staying at the Red, Red Line Inn and you have a big beard and you go to the bathroom to shave your beard and your, the mirror fogs up, if you wipe away the mirror, you'll be able to see over your shoulder Flory uh, waiting because you have a beard like her husband. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. That's just a little side story. Okay, a couple of related um, structures from the Neolithic time period in this area that I just want to touch on quickly are Silvery Hill. This is a man-made mound, a hill that was maybe a lookout tower um, in the area. We also have the West Kennet Longborough uh, in Avebury, England. This is a burial tomb. And then um, I'll, in the next one, go into Callanish. We're going to go up to Scotland 
and talk about Caledish, and then we're going to go over to Ireland and talk about Newgrange. So there is the beginning of our Neolithic in the British Isles.